In this video lecture, I will give you the complete overview of our course so that you can easily summarize the course. The course is divided into the nine different sections, whereas the section one is the course introduction. So in the first section, you was introduced to the course as the orientation to the course and you get the overview of our course. In the section two, you got the general details of our structure. That is general details and the side details with respect to our G plus three story RCC building. In the section three, you learn about the architectural aspects and the structural planning. So, as per IS four five six two thousand and IS one three nine two zero, we preliminary design the section sizes for the structural planning and to draw the structure in the E tabs. We'll calculate the preliminary section sizes for the structural members with respect to the codal provisions as per IS four five six two thousand and IS one three nine two zero two thousand sixteen. For the floor slabs, we follow the codal provisions of clause twenty three and twenty four. Of IS four five six two thousand for beams, we follow the codal provisions as per the clause six of IS one three nine two zero two thousand sixteen and clause twenty three of IS four five six two thousand. And for columns, we follow the codal provisions as per clause seven of IS one three nine two zero two thousand sixteen. So in the section three, we see the preliminary section sizes for the slab, beam, and column. In the way, we calculate the preliminary section sizes for the slabs, beams, and columns. And we convert our architectural plan into the floor framing plan as per structural planning of IS four five six two thousand and IS one three nine two zero two thousand sixteen. In the section four, we calculate the loads which are coming on the structure. So here in the E tabs, we did not need to calculate the dead load of the structure because E tabs calculate the dead load of the structure in the calculation by itself because we input the proper values for the unit weight of the materials for the different structural sections. We calculate the superimposed dead load as per IS eight seven five part one nineteen eighty seven. Here it is for the flooring, for the ceiling plaster, and the for the steps over the west slab. For the live load consideration, we follow the IS 875 Part 2, 1987. With respect to the different types of room, with respect to the residential building, we consider the intensity of the load with respect to the type of room, and this load we apply in our structure. After that, we was calculate the wind load as per IS 875 Part 3, 2015. In this section, we was see the detailed calculation for the wind load, and also with respect to the Microsoft Excel sheet. Here it is the wind load calculations in the x direction, and here it is the wind load calculations in the y direction. After that, we see the important parameters for the earthquake load considerations, and at the end of this section, we see that the wall load calculations under the different types of beams. So as we calculate these different types of load that we applied in our structural model. The next section was brief reading and explanation of IS 1893 Part 1, 2016. In this section, we see the brief reading and explanation of IS 1893 Part 1, 2016, because the understanding of this code is very important in the design of building structures. Section six was the analysis of RC frame by the software E tabs. In this section, we see the software work in the E tabs. So, in the computer software E tabs, first of all, we will draw the grid by inputting the grid data and the story data. After defining the material properties and the section properties, we draw the column first. Then we draw the beams. Then we draw the slabs. Then we draw the staircase. And after modeling the structure, we apply the loads as we calculated the loads in the section four. So first of all, we apply the dead loads that is for the flooring and the ceiling plaster. Then we apply the wall loads which are on the beams. And after that, we apply the live loads which are as per the consideration of IS eight seven five part two nineteen eighty seven. After that, we define the load patterns. In which, while defining the load pattern of wind load, we define the wind load as the user load. And as we calculated the wind loads by the manual calculation, we input here with respect to the diaphragm and the story. For the x direction, we input the values in the positive f x, and for the y direction, we input the values in the positive f y. After defining the wind load pattern, we define the earthquake load pattern, and in the way. The earthquake load will be applied in our structure after analysis by the E tabs itself. So, with respect to the direction and eccentricity by the codal provisions, we apply the earthquake loads. And after defining the load patterns and load cases, we define the load combination as per IS four five six two thousand. And addition to that, we also define the load combination envelopes for the design load combinations and service load combinations.
and then we check our model for any modeling error. After that, we analyze our structure and in the way we got the axial forces, shear forces and the moments along the major axis and the minor axis of the frame of our structure. And also we got the moments along the shells of our structure. So by these data, we can easily design our structure. But we need to apply the analysis check as per Indian standard codal provisions. So for the story drift limitation, torsional irregularity and lateral sway, we apply the checks with the help of Microsoft Excel sheets. So here it is these different checks that is story drift limitation check which is as per IS 1893 part 1 2016 which is the story drift shall not exceed 0 0.04 times to the story height. And after that we apply the torsional irregularity check which is also as per IS 1893 part 1 2016 in which maximum to the minimum deflection in the story shall not exceed 1.5 ratio. So this check we also perform and we got the results as ok. And after that, as per IS 456-2000, we perform the check for the lateral sway. That is the deflection at the top of the structure for all service load combinations. Shall not exceed the H by 500 value, whereas the H is the total height of the structure. So in the way, we perform the analysis checks and we complete the analysis procedure. After satisfying the structure for the analysis results, we design the structure by the ETAPS itself. Because by designing the structure in ETAPS, we got to see that is there any member of the section sizes is failing in the design or not. So after that we design manually the different structural members that is first of all we will design the isolated footing. We design the one isolated footing by the manual calculation by importing the analysis data from the E tabs for the axial forces at the base of our structure. So by importing the analysis data for all the base restraints we design the isolated footing by the Microsoft Excel sheet and in the way we complete the design for isolated footings. After that we design the columns. First of all we design one column by the manual calculation and similarly with the help of Microsoft Excel sheet as per SP16 and IS456 we design all other columns. Similar the procedure we follow for the beams and the slabs and we design the staircase by the manual calculations. And at the end we see the detailing of our structural elements. So in the way section 6, 7 and 8 is completed. So this is the complete course. In the next video lecture I will give you some bonus tips to enhance your skills in the designing of the reinforced concrete building structures.